In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Google Ads tags via server-side Google Tag Manager. We're gonna do both the conversion tags and the remarketing tags. Let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon, and this channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your web stats. If you want to get started with server-side Google Tag Manager, I believe Stape is the easiest way to do so. And in the video description, you'll find an affiliate link. If you use that affiliate link to sign up for Stape, I want to give you a free mini course by me on how to get started with server-side Google Tag Manager. Link and information in the video description below. All right, let me show you how to set up your Google Ads tags with server-side Google Tag Manager. And let me start by stating what we already covered in previous tutorials. Because in previous tutorials, I already showed you how to set up a server-side Google Tag Manager container through Stape and how to link that with your regular server-side Google Tag Manager container. And I showed you how Google Analytics and consent mode work within a server-side tracking setup. So don't panic if you haven't watched those. You can always watch those later or pause this video and watch those first. I will link these tutorials in the video description for you to watch and know that this tutorial really builds upon that. So if you want to set up Google Ads tagging through server-side Google Tag Manager, the first tag that you should add is the conversion linker. So I'm gonna go ahead in my server Google Tag Manager container and I'm gonna add the conversion linker. I'm gonna call this 0301 Google Ads conversion linker. And um, the conversion linker, you can find that under the Google Ads menu and then conversion linker. And as a trigger, I'm gonna just use all pages. And uh, if you wanted to learn more about what this tag does, there's a piece of documentation that I will link down below. But shortly it will just help measure click data and it will make sure that the conversions are tracked effectively. So link down below if you wanna know more, but if you don't add this, you will get a warning that you need to add this tag. So I'm just gonna start here. All right, the next one that I want to show you is how to set up a remarketing tag. So let's uh, go ahead in my server container. Let's go to new, let's go to 0302, Google ads, remark or retargeting and let's uh, open up tech configuration. Let's go under Google Ads and then here it is, Google Ads Remarketing. And it also states that the conversion linker is found and if you haven't added it, it will show a warning here and it will ask for a conversion ID. So the conversion ID, you can find that if you go into Google Ads, if you go into Tools and then Shared Library and then Audience Manager. And let's scroll to the right where you have a button that says your data sources. And under data sources, there is a Google Ads tag and I'm gonna go into details. If I scroll down and if I go into tag setup, here is a section that says use Google Tag Manager. And here's my conversion ID. So I'm gonna just copy it here. I'm gonna go back into my server container. And for this, I could just add it here but I like to make variables. So let me just show you how that works. So I'm gonna go into this variable button here. I'm gonna add a new variable and I'm gonna name this Google Ads Conversion ID. And under variable configuration, I'm gonna choose a constant variable and I'm gonna paste in the value because I'm gonna need this value later on as well. So through this variable, I can just reference the Google Ads Conversion ID and it will automatically return this value. So here, if I press save, you will see that Google Ads conversion ID is in brackets. And that means that I'm referencing a variable and it will just return the value that I just pasted in. It's just a little bit more convenient. And the Google Ads remarketing tag can be posted on all pages. Please note that I don't need to bother with consent because Google Ads will automatically change its behavior based on the incoming consent state. I will show you later how that works. Okay, so save. And this is how you add remarketing to your server-side Google Tag Manager setup. All right, so let me show you how to set up a Google Ads conversion through server-side Google Tag Manager. And we're gonna do that by going in our server-side container and then pressing a new, making a new tag here. I'm gonna call this 0303 Google Ads conversion. And I'm gonna track my contact form. Another tag configuration, I'm gonna choose Google Ads and then the Google Ads conversion tracking template. 
And um, here we need to fill out a conversion ID and a conversion label. So let's first look up what the values are for our conversion ID and our conversion label. And for that, we need to go into Google Ads and then under goals, we are going to create a new conversion action. I'm gonna create a website action and I'm gonna fill out my website domain here. It's asking, it wants to perform a scan. And after the scan, you can create a conversion action manually. So I'm gonna add a conversion action. Uh, I'm gonna select the contact conversion. I'm gonna call this contact form and then server side. So I know if this is server or client side conversion. I'm gonna use the same value. I'm gonna fill out 60 euros per lead. I'm gonna track one per conversion because if somebody fills out my contact form and then fills it out again, it's still the same lead. I don't want to double count. Of course, this would be different if I would track purchases. If somebody purchases something on your site and then purchase again, you just want to track every purchase. But in this case, lead generation, I want to track one per session. The conversion windows, I'm gonna leave those at their defaults right now. Enhanced conversions is for a different tutorial. So I'm gonna leave that also. I'm gonna press done and I'm gonna save and continue. And if you press save and continue, there's a tab here that says use Google Tag Manager and you can find the conversion ID and the conversion label here. And um, in this case, the conversion ID, we already have that. I'm gonna copy both of them here. If you want to use an existing conversion and track that in server side Google Tag Manager, you just go back into goals and then find the goal that you want to track in this list. So in this case, my contact form server side conversion, open that up and if you scroll down, there is a tech setup section and you can find exactly the same information right here. So under use Google Tag Manager, you have the conversion label and conversion ID right here. Okay, so let's go back into our server side container. The conversion ID, to be honest, it's the same everywhere within your account. The remarketing tag that we have set up previously, it has the same conversion ID. So we can just pull in our variable, the variable that we already created. So Google Ads conversion ID, this is fine. And then, under conversion label, I'm gonna paste in this value. And since this is the only place where I need this value, I'm not gonna reuse this value. I'm just gonna paste it in here. I'm not gonna put it in a variable. All right, now that we have set up our conversion tag, let's also create a trigger. And for this, I'm gonna go back into my regular container. So this is the client side container that runs on my site. I'm gonna hit preview. So this will open up the tag assistant. I'm gonna connect this to my site. And uh, I do this because I want to show you how setting up triggers work in a service side container. So we have our regular container, the tech assistant and our site here. And then I also have my server container. Let me just quickly save this tag and also put this into preview mode. So I can show you really how this works. So every time I reload my page here, a page view is being sent to my server container right here. So these are all incoming events and these are just GA4 events. And these GA4 events act as a trigger for my server container. And of course, we're just forwarding these to Google Analytics, but I'm also using the incoming events to trigger other tags. So for instance, a meta ads page view. So there's another tutorial that I built this, uh, the conversion linker tag that we already created and the remarketing tag that we already created as well. So the server container runs on incoming GA4 events. That's a really an important concept to grasp here. If you want to know more about this, please watch my other tutorials where we go a little bit deeper on this. So what I need is an event, a GA4 event that runs on my contact form thank you page. And I've already created this in the previous tutorial. So here it is. It's a GA4 event contact form submit and it just runs on my contact form thank you page. So if you want to see how I built this, please watch the Google Analytics server-side tagging tutorial. I will link that in the video description. Basically, if I fill out my contact form here, so I'm gonna just press test, test, dot, the test and then I hit send. It will send a contact form submit event. So it has the contact form submit event name here. It will send this on my thank you page. So here's my thank you page. It will send that to the server container. So here it is under the incoming events, the contact form submit. And this is the incoming event that I can use to trigger my Google Ads conversion tag. So let me show you how to set it up. I'm gonna open up my Google Ads conversion tag. I already created and configured the first part, tag configuration, but I still need to add a trigger. So I'm gonna add 
a new trigger. I'm going to build a new trigger. I'm going to call that contact form submit. And under trigger configuration, I'm going to choose a custom event. And I'm going to fill out the event name that I see here that is incoming, that I configured from my regular container. All right, I'm going to hit save. So let's test if this setup is actually working. So I'm going to go into my server container. I'm going to hit preview. So it's going to reload my configuration and it's going to load in all my new settings. And I'm going to go back into the regular container, hit preview mode again, because I want to start with a clean slate. I'm going to go into my contact form here. I'm going to submit another entry here. So test and I'm going to hit submit. Again, this will just fire the contact form submit event when I land on the thank you page. So that is right here. That will make sure that there is a contact form submit event coming into my server container. And if I select that, I can see that the Google Ads conversion contact form is now succeeded. All right, so let's talk about consent mode because in my previous tutorials, I already showed you how to set up consent mode in a server side Google Tag Manager context, but you haven't seen me do anything in this tutorial so far. And that is because all Google Tags, so both Google Analytics here and the Google Tags here, they automatically adjust their behavior based on the incoming events. So if the contact form submit has consent mode state for ad storage, for instance, your marketing cookies or your analytic storage, it will recognize the consent state. So if it has been denied, it will adjust its behavior. If those signals are set to granted, it will adjust its behavior accordingly. So for all Google tags in our server container, we don't need to do any configuration. So again, if you have a contact form submit with all consent signals set to denied, you will still see that this tag has fired. So you will see the same tag and it will signal that it has succeeded. It will internally change its behavior accordingly and it will only send privacy friendly pings to Google. If you don't want the tag to fire at all, you can of course make it a little bit stricter by making an adjustment here on your trigger and then say, I want to send only some custom events and then say consent mode at storage contains granted. And again, I already discussed how to make these variables in a previous tutorial. So I'm not going to repeat myself here. It is a little bit too involved to do that, but this would be a way to prevent the tag from firing at all. If consent mode at storage is not granted. All right. I want to mention a couple of advanced tips. And the first one is geo location data. So Google ads tags needs to know the location of your users. And those are important for consent mode. Those are important for Google signals and for your Google ads tags in general. And um, I ran into an issue where I forgot to add these headers for one of my clients. It wasn't a state container. It was a Google cloud platform container, but the conversion tags on those sites were severely underperforming until I enabled those headers. So I really recommend if you use Google ads on your site and you want to track your conversions through server side tracking, I really recommend that you enable the location headers. So for Stape, this is really easy. You can just log into your account, go to power ups and then enable the geo headers under power ups. And that's as easy as enabling it here and then saving your changes. Again, this is important for consent mode, for Google signals and for your Google ads tax performance. All right. Another advanced tips that I have done a couple of times now with clients is where a client already had Google ads conversions set up on a client site, and then we set them up on a server side container as well. What you can do in Google ads, you can just leave the existing conversions and then set those to primary, but then add the other conversions and set those to secondary. So let me show you what I mean. So in, in Google ads, uh, in this tutorial, I already created a contact form service site and it's here. It's now set to a primary action. Let's say that I already have a primary conversion and it's set to the client site. It's just a regular conversion and I want to add a service site conversion and I want to track the performance of that conversion over a short window of time and then compare that to the other one. I can just go in, edit this, set this to secondary. And as soon as I'm ready and I know, and I verified that this conversion is actually performing better than the original, I can revert this. So I can just go in and make this a primary action and then go back into the client side conversion and revert that to 
a secondary conversion. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was clear and I hope it was helpful. If you have a question or if you want to suggest a topic for a video that I should do next, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you want to support the channel, please click like and subscribe because that really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. But uh, for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.